Hey guys, students, in this clip, we're going to be going over an example on how to um, find the extreme value of a function. We're going to be using a graphical and algebraic approach to solve this problem. And this is part one of a multi-part series. So feel free to subscribe to my channel so you can get updates to future installments of this uh, series. Okay, so for this example we are doing today, uh, part A, we have to find all critical points. B, we have to sketch the value of the function on the specified domain. For C, we have to use our results from A, uh, parts A and B to find the location, description, and the value of all the extrema. And part D, we have to state the applicability of the extreme value theorem. So um, can we um, make any conclusions um, using the extreme value theorem for the given problem? Okay. So for number one, uh, we are considering the function y equals sine x on the interval 0 to 3 pi over 2. Alright, let's start with part A, where to find the critical points. Part A, critical points. Now, critical points are basically points in the domain where the derivative is either 0 or that does not exist. Okay, so that's what we're looking for here. So first thing we're going to do, let's rewrite the function. The function is uh, y equals sine x. We're going to look for the first derivative, y prime. The derivative of sine we know is cosine x, so y prime is equal to cosine x. So now that we have this function, we're going to look for all the values of x in this domain where the derivative is either zero or non-existent. Let's find the first case, um, the case is where y prime is equal to zero. Let's deal with that first. All right, so to find those places where um, y prime is equal to zero, we want to find the values of x to satisfy the equation cosine x equals zero. So what point um, in this domain does um, the function attain a value of zero or, or intersect the x-axis? So to answer this easily, we can just simply make a sketch of the um, cosine curve, sketch the cosine curve for this domain real quick. So let's say this is pi right here. That's pi and 3 pi over 2. And then the, max, the maximum uh, value is at 1. So it goes like this through uh, pi over 2, down through pi, and all the way there. All right, so at what point does the cosine curve intersect the x-axis? It intersects at two values, namely pi over 2. That's pi over 2 right there. It's kind of small. And also at 3 pi over 2. Okay, so the value of x where the derivative is 0 is where x is equal to pi over 2 or, um, or where x is um, equal to 3 pi over 2. Okay, so what does this tell me? Well, before I make any conclusions, we have to examine the cases where uh, the derivative does not exist, okay? So where in this function is y prime uh, non-existence? Where does the derivative not exist? We know the derivative doesn't exist when you have a uh, discontinuity, a corner, um, a cusp, or a vertical tangent. And if you look at the, all the, um, this graph on this domain, we don't have any of those situations here. So um, where is the derivative non-existent? The answer is never. The derivative is always um, always exists in the entire domain um, for for this function. Okay, so that means that our critical points are going to be only the points where the derivative is zero. Critical points, um, which are going to be at x equals pi over two and three pi over two. All right, so that answers part A for us. All right. The next thing we're going to do is shift our attention to um, the B part, where we are to uh, sketch the graph of the function on the specified domain. What we are sketching is the original problem. Okay. All right. So let me just partition my workspace. So now let's go ahead and um, draw the graph. We're going to graph. Um, this is part B. We're going to graph uh, y equals sine x on the domain uh, 0 to 3 pi over 2. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, there's my y-axis, and there goes my x-axis. Let's make this one a little bit bigger so that it's 
clear, easy for us to label. Um, let's call it three units up the maximum one, three units down the minimum negative one. Uh, let's call that pi over two. This is pi and three pi over two. And this is two pi. Uh, so this right here is three pi over two. Okay, so let's go ahead and sketch the graph. Um, so this is close circle here. Oh, it starts from the center. All right, center to the max. All right, back to the center, and then down to the min. All right, so let's get the graph of sine. So it looks something like this. Just try my best here. Part of my um, terrible graph, but it's just a sketch. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, so there goes the graph. All right, so now that we have the sketch of the graph, it's really easy for us to um, identify our extrema, okay, just by looking at how the behavior of this graph is. So let's shift our attention to part C. We're going to use the critical points on the appearance of this graph to um, find the location and description of our extrema and also the, the value, okay? So let's start by looking at our critical points, okay? So we have two critical points. The first critical point is... Um, x equals pi over 2. So what's the value there? We're going to evaluate the function at pi over 2. So f of pi over 2 is sine of pi over 2. And we know what that is. You can just use a graph to clearly see that is equal to 1. All right. So what kind of extrema is this? At pi over 2, um, we have a maximum. Okay. This is a maximum. And it happens to be a local and an absolute maximum. All right, so we have a local and absolute absolute max uh, of one. The value is one and is at uh, x equals pi over two. Let me write that again. Again, I'm kind of running out of space here, so I'm going to cut it short. So what we have is um, we have a local and absolute max, um, the value which is 1 of 1, and it happens at x equals uh, pi over 2. All right, so if we look at the graph, this point right here, that is a local, and it also happens to be the absolute maximum. And it occurs at the point pi over 2, comma, 1. This is the value of the maximum or extrema, and this is where it happens at. Okay? All right, now let's shift our attention to the next critical point. The next critical point is 3 pi over 2. This is where the derivative is also um, 0, but it also happens to be an endpoint. So it's like we have an overlap situation here. Okay, so we're going to call it a critical and endpoint. Okay, so critical and endpoint. Remember, when you're looking for the extrema, if the endpoints are included in the domain, you have to evaluate the function at the, extre the endpoints too, okay? So we have an overlap situation here where a critical point happens to be one of the endpoints, so um, we just do both of them at once, all right? So x equals 3 pi over 2. What's the story there? Let's evaluate the function at that value, f of 3 pi over 2. We'll plug in 3 pi over 2 into sine, we can use the graph to easily tell what the output is, which is negative 1. All right? And what do we know about this extrema right here? It turns out to be a local and an absolute minimum on this interval. And the value is negative 1 at x equals 3 pi over 2. All right? So let's indicate that on the graph. So this point right here happens to be a local and absolute minimum. And the point where it happens is at 3 pi over 2, comma, negative 1. All right? Okay, we considered one endpoint, which happens to be one of our critical points. We also have to consider the second endpoint, which is uh, 0. Okay? So we have an uh, endpoint, page... We have an endpoint at um, 
x equals zero. So we, what we have to do is evaluate the function at zero. So basically, what is the output when x is zero, sine of zero is zero, okay? This value right here is, um, a, this extrema is a minimum too, okay? But it's just a local min, all right? It's a local minimum. It's not the absolute minimum. So you have a local minimum of zero at x equals zero, all right? So let's go ahead and label it. Um, so at this point right here, we have a local min, and it happens at the point zero, zero. Okay, so this is a local mean, this is a local mean, but this one is much lower, so we can see that this is the absolute mean. Okay, we have only one max in this in this situation. All right, so part D, um, can we uh, apply the extreme value to this situation? There are two conditions that are necessary to apply the extreme value. The, first of all, the function has to be continuous. Secondly, it has to be in a closed interval. Is sine x continuous on this interval are there any discontinuities the answer is no no discontinuities is the interval on the consideration closed the answer is yes so since the function is on a closed interval and continuous the extreme value theorem applies here the extreme value theorem applies here here um since since uh, y equals sine x is continuous on the closed interval, okay? Closed interval uh, 0 to 3 pi over 2. Okay, so because of, since it satisfies the initial condition of the extreme value theorem, we can conclude for a certainty that this function has a max uh, and min. So there, there you have it. Now, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking here so you get updates to other cool clips such as this. And feel free to um, post a comment to let me know uh, what you think about this presentation. And do give me a thumbs up uh, if you liked it. I appreciate it. And feel free to share uh, it with your friends. More clips can be found on macgorsev.com calculus. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.